Hey everyone, it's Alyssa from Planet Alyssa. I am here with this week's What I Sold on Etsy video. I am happy to report that it has been a better week than it was last week, and I actually met my $200 uh, selling goal for the week, so that's nice. I sold, let me see, I sold 13 items this week for a total of $229. It does help that one of the items I sold was a, a bigger ticket item, an $80 item, but... Um, yeah, I'm happy with this week's uh, sale, so I have no explanation for why it was busier this week than it was last week. I certainly didn't do anything different, so there really is no uh, no way to predict this business, I, I guess. I mean, to some extent, you know, you know that the fourth quarter is going to be busy, and you know that the winter is going to be slower, but other than that, it just seems so random. Once again this week, I forgot to do the screenshot. I was going to do that last night. I actually fell asleep while I was working at my computer last night. I was pretty tired. I went out and did some sourcing earlier in the day, and I guess I was just uh, pretty worn down. So anyway, I never got to. I tried to do it this morning by like setting the dates, and it didn't work right. So you know what? There's no shop stats screen this week, so sorry about that. But I will show you each of the items that sold and how much they sold for. And keep in mind that the price you see is the selling price of the item, so that doesn't include fees that I paid to Etsy, doesn't include the shipping fees the buyer paid, and what else doesn't include? It doesn't include the fees I paid to purchase the item. So, ah, without further ado, here's what I sold this week. The first item I sold this week was also the biggest sale of the week. I sold this vintage telephone for $80. It is a rotary telephone, and it does have an antique style but um, it is a, a reproduction phone, so it's not antique. It's probably from the 1970s, 1980s. It was a nicely made uh, reproduction phone. And I don't remember where I picked this up. I think it might have been from a thrift store. And then I sold another yearbook this week. Uh, this one sold for $20. It's from Miller State College, I believe. And it was from the 1960s, and I think it's you can see it there, 1964. Uh, this one's interesting. It actually sold to a Hollywood props department. It didn't have a specific studio or or television show or something on the uh, on the address, so I'm not sure what it's going to be used in. But um, obviously, they probably didn't need a yearbook specifically for Millersville State College. They probably just need a college yearbook from the 1960s for you know a scene in a movie or or television show or something. So. Who buys yearbooks? All kinds of people buy yearbooks. Sold this rolling pin, which was actually in the clearance section of my shops. It sold for $7. I originally had it priced at $14 and marked it down 50% off. Uh, what was kind of interesting on this sale is the person who bought it watches these videos. So hi, if you happen to see this one. And I don't think she found it because of watching my video. She just happened to search Etsy for rolling pins and, uh, you know, my listing came up and she recognized, you know, my name from these videos. So, uh... Hey, that's kind of cool. Anyway, still moving stuff from the clearance section, so that's nice. I think I think this was something I got at a thrift store. Okay, I sold this um, Disney pinups wall decor thing for $7. This is like a printed cardboard uh, wall hanging. It was part of a set. This was part of the Dumbo set. Uh, unfortunately, um, I got this guy. I didn't get Dumbo, so, you know, I just had him. I sold him for $7. I picked him up with some other pinups all in, like, a bag at a garage sale, yard sale, but unfortunately, none of them were a complete set. It was just sort of a, a mismatch of, of different pinups, and um, I, I think I've shown you some before that have sold, and so this one sold for $7. This is a vintage new old stock rain bonnet or rain hood. Um, this is the picture of the package. This particular rain bonnet was clear with yellow trim as opposed to pink trim. There's a garbage truck out in the alley making all kinds of noise, but hopefully you'll be able to hear me over it. And the dog's going to start barking at it soon now anyway. But what was interesting about this sale was I had it listed for $6. The buyer offered me 5 I said no problem. Uh, revised the listing, added the word reserved to the title, and didn't hear anything back for her and honestly just forgot about it. And so it was like a week after that that the sale came in. So the lesson here is to just be patient. Um, you know, some buyers expect things to be done instantly. Other buyers are working at a much slower pace. And, you know, maybe this is an older lady. Um, probably she's just buying this rain bonnet because she can't find them anymore in the stores and she really wants one. And maybe she doesn't even have a computer and she just uses one at the library or at her you know, child's house or whatever, who knows. Um, but yeah, have some patience uh, with sales and, you know, even if you don't hear back from buyer, they may still be interested. 
This is a vintage uh, ceramic Christmas planter. It's a cute angel holding a bunch of Christmas packages. It sold for $25. This is something I picked up over the summer at a rummage sale. It didn't sell at Christmas time. It sold in April, go figure. Um, but Christmas stuff does sell year round. So if you're if you're holding back on listing Christmas stuff and wait until Christmas, you really don't have to because you may sell it very well before then. This was a collection of vintage postcards, all with flower uh, illustrations. There were linen cards with tinted designs. Sold for $12. There were um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these postcards in this lot. They were all blank, so they hadn't been used. And so, uh, you know, they could be used for scrapbooking, but they also could be used if you just want to send a vintage postcard to someone. And I think. I think these might have come from an auction, they might have come from a thrift store, they might have come from more than one place, I'm not even sure. And I sold this vintage radio, this was in the clearance section of my shop, it sold for $15, originally had it priced at $30, it was a Lloyd's radio, solid state, whatever, it was actually in the original box, which was nice, and I do not remember where I picked this one up, because I've had it a while, that's why I got moved to the clearance section. So this cruel embroidery kit of a, a quail, I think it was to make a pillow or, or something square shaped anyway, sold for $20. Um, by the way, this is not from the lot of um, different uh, cruel and embroidery projects that I was showing in last week's haul video. I actually got this before. Uh, game birds are apparently very popular. But uh, yeah, no, I think I picked this one up at a thrift store. Now, this is a vintage napkin holder. It looks sort of like a trivet. Um, very similar to those trivets of this style. Anyway, it sold for $8. Uh, it says, no matter where I serve my guests, it seems they like my kitchen best. So kind of funny, uh, you know, campy. Uh, does have some wear to it. As you can see, some of the paint there is worn off the top. I don't remember where I got this one either. Sold these vintage note cards for $6. They're all got these pretty um, embroidered style photos on them. Sold for $6. I said that already, didn't I? Um, but there was a set of five of them with the envelopes, and I got them um, in, a while, uh, in a lot a while ago with a bunch of other different stationary items at a flea market, rummage sale, fundraiser kind of thing. This is a wooden box for actually holding playing cards. You can see it has the different playing card suits at the top. It sold for $12. I picked this up at an auction. It was one of those auctions where you bid online and then go and pick up the stuff. And it actually had playing cards in it, but I actually took them out and sold them. Well, I haven't sold them yet, but I listed them separately um, and decided to list the box on its own because someone that wants this box may not necessarily want those cards. And finally this week, another uh, craft kit. This one says God is Love, sold for $12. It's a little bit smaller size than that quail, and it's like a stitchery kit. Uh, I love, love the colors and illustrations. Just seems so 1980s. Like, this is what I think of when I think of the 1980s. Um, but yeah, that is everything that I sold this week, guys. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I do put out these videos every week showing the different vintage items I've sold in my Etsy store, Planet Alyssa, and then try to get some other videos out to you on selling online, selling here and on Amazon and whatnot. I've been getting caught up on making my haul follow-up video, so I might have some more for you next week. And I'm also planning on making a video, which doesn't really have anything to do with Etsy, but a lot of people um, always seem to want to know what kind of scanner I use for scanning items for Amazon. And I feel like I'm answering that question all the time in comments, so I'm just going to make a video about that and, and show people how to scan items for Amazon. So look for that soon. Maybe I'll get that out this weekend but I am going to an auction tomorrow, my first estate auction of the season, so I don't know if I'll get around to, to making that video or not. But anyway, um, yeah, no, if I pick up stuff at the auction, I will, uh, I'll will do a haul video and, and show you what I got. Not sure what to expect at this one, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend, and thanks for watching, and happy selling, everyone!